Welcome to Living Martial Arts with Master Ray Gale, aka the Dark Master. Living Martial Arts discuss and examines the everyday exercise, philosophy, and lifestyle of the martial arts enthusiast. The host talks about his own training, past and present, and he also interviews many martial artists to discover how they continue to live their own martial arts journey. Tune in for top tips on how to get the best out of your martial art. Or perhaps you're thinking of starting a martial art. This podcast offers you an easy way to dip your toe in. Sign up for the newsletter at livingmartialarts.com and get regular updates and training tips direct to your inbox. Follow the Dark Master on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram at Living Martial Arts. Uh, hello to everyone. This is me, the Dark Master, back with another podcast with uh, somebody from uh, from my past martial arts days who uh, I'd admired for a long, long time. Uh, we've got Master Gordon Fern with us today. Uh, so, how are you doing, Master Fern? Hey, how you doing? Nice to nice to see you again. It's been a long time. It has. It has been a while. It has been a while, and um, it's it's great. Uh, thank you for for offering to to come on my podcast and uh, share your uh, your sort of taekwondo and your taekwondo journey, and you know um, places that uh, that you that you've been, and hopefully places that you hope to go. But um, uh, without further ado, I ask my my question, and everything tends to stem from that. Is um, you know, can you tell uh, my audience here a little bit about your um, your martial arts journey, uh, how it started? Um, I know this is a question that, <laughs> that can go on for uh, a few years, actually, probably, <laughs> with yeah. people that have been training a long time like you, but uh, we need to have the, the shortened version, but uh, go for it. I'll do my best to keep it short. Um, <laughs> yeah, I come, I come from a town in Derbyshire, a town, in, a town called Ashbourne. Um, I was a, a shy kid. Um, I, at nine years old, I was playing football with a friend. I was quite good. I used to play for the Junior Rams Um football not many people here of Derby County nowadays but that's what I used to do and I remember just running on the the pitch one night and I just said I just don't like doing this and the the my friend who was next to me he said well I do this uh, this martial art taekwondo um do you want to come along and so that week I stopped playing football much to my dad's dismay and took up um I went to the local club I went to watch to start off with and and you know, we'll probably talk about this a bit more later, but when I walked into the club, everybody was just smashing things up. There was flying kicks going off everywhere. And as soon as I walked in there, this is, I thought this, this is a bit of me, not that I did anything like that. Cause I was a clumsy kid. I always used to fall over and that type of stuff, but I was just so mesmerized what, what people were doing. And I thought I'll go along and, and then fast forward a little bit. I was, I remember going up to my first class and my, my instructor, Malcolm Anderson, as it was at the time, he he said um he just basically gave me a belt a white belt it says if you can tie that belt um then you can come in and train with me so on my first lesson i learned to tie my my belt so then i started training and then for the fir- first couple of years i was this cheeky kid always always getting into trouble you know and it's very disciplined back there as i'm sure sure you know you know if your stances weren't right your legs swept if your blocks weren't right you were hit with a stick and i remember looking around and grown men were crying the kids were crying um even some of the women cried because they just it just took a lot of pleasure of just like destroying people mm-hmm. and the crazy thing about it was everybody went back every single week um <laughs> obviously if you try and do that nowadays that's that's <laughs> not going to get you many students at all yeah. uh, and probably a prison sentence as well <laughs> uh, so yeah so up until like the blue belt level i i never really took it serious and i remember somebody picking me up by the scruff of the neck one of the second hands and he actually lifted me off the floor pinned me against the wall and he says you are going to be terrible at this you should stop it now he put me down on the floor and from that day everything changed and i started to put a bit more effort into it uh started to do competitions at the at the i think it's blue belt red stripe level i got a medal um on my first tournament it was in belper in derbyshire um mm-hmm. And then my instructor, who I still call my original instructor, Master Tom Coleman, um, who's an HV black belt, he took over the club then. And yeah, he took me everywhere. He took me to see, we, we never knew of seminars or competitions until he came along. So I started to go into every competition with him. I started to do seminars of uh, Grandmaster He or Cho. And it kind of, kind of snowballed from there, really. And I did the 
you, if you don't know already, I'm part of the TAGB. So I, I took part, my big main event that I took part in, start off, it was the 10th anniversary of the TAGB, which I believe you fought in. Yes, uh, I did. Yeah, I fought on that one and did a demo on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, that's it, of course. Yeah, and um, well, that was a great demo as well. Uh, but yeah. the, the demos, you never see demos like that anymore. It's just, no. it's, it's just a good era, as, as everyone always says, who, who, who's my age. But yeah, that was my first main thing. And it's the first time, and I'm, I know you know this guy as well, Michael Parchment, yeah, yeah. Who, my rival at the time. So I used to fight welterweight. And, um, and it, I, I didn't, it's like a rabbit in a headlights type thing. I was stuck in front of an international fighter. And then bearing in mind, there was no cadet division then. You were, you know, as soon as you were 16, you're straight into the adults. Uh, I think I was 15 at the time when Ralph selected me for the area team. And um, yeah, so I fought Michael Parsh and I thought, yeah, I really like a bit of this. So then uh, I did uh, the English Championships. I won I won a patent and I won a bronze medal in the, in the black belt division because uh, I only had one as a junior and then it was straight into the adults. And I remember for the first three years as an adult, I was fighting world and European champions and I just got beaten up, beaten up for three or four years, like literally like punched, knocked across the ring. And my main goal was to be, to get past the first round. That was my main goal. Yeah. And then with a bit of determination, I got there and then I started to see, you know, quarterfinals, semifinals. And it was, it was, it was a hard road, but it's for, for someone like me, who I don't think was naturally gifted at Taekwondo or anything flexible wise. Um, it was, it was a good journey for me because it just made me more and more hungry. Then I was fortunate to come across people like Ralph Minot, who I, I still say to this day, he helped uh, me become the fighter that I am uh, with his style. He had a unique style as, as I know, you know, uh, I also took up boxing at the time with a guy called Clifton Mitchell, who ran a pro boxing gym in Derby. He was he was with the Nassim Hamid camp, so my footwork was was uh, came from that background from the Winterbank gym in Sheffield with Brendan Ingle, and then Ralph got me into some WTF as well. So I had a, quite a nice blend, and it, yeah. but it was also quite confusing as well because I wanted to be a box, I wanted to be a WTF fighter, I wanted to be a TGB fighter, and it's just like you drop and. I thought I was going to be able to do all three of them, but then I had to, you know, over time I realized that I could only do one of them. And my bread and butter was Taekwondo, the ITF style TGB. Um, so I channeled everything into that. And then I started to, um, and then Grandmaster Walton told me to come to squad training. And then, you know, I was on his team for 25 plus years. I was the captain for um, a very long time. I, I don't know how many years. And I won world European titles and saw, you know, a good chunk of the worlds with the national team. And I know you've been there as well. And they were great, great years traveling on with a team that you bond with and they become your brothers and sisters. And and it was just a fantastic time. And um, yeah, I say, I, say um, I think towards the end of my career, my biggest, the biggest thing for me, because I then went from welterweight down to lightweight. So Initially, when I first did it, I got this six pack. And I was like, oh, my God, I, I love a bit of this. But as I got older, it was harder to maintain 64 kilograms. When naturally, I was like 71, 72 kilograms. Um, so and then I would say for the last kind of eight to 10 years of my career, I spent a good chunk trying to lose weight for the competition, which was the hardest part. Once I got in there, it was just mental determination that got me through it. There was never I personally don't think people might say different. I don't think I won it glamorously all the time because I was always weight drained. Um, but I think with because I'd put the hard work in leading up to it, I'd give myself six weeks up to every competition to eat clean, do well, you know, and and just make sure I followed the the routine and, so, and the program type thing. And it did it did me good. I wouldn't recommend losing the weight that I lost like a stone in water. I would never recommend that to anybody now, but um it did it did me some good or or not if you like, but um <laughs> yeah. results, I got the results. And it was a hard thing, you know, I was getting to like 20, 2011 when I was thinking about maybe stepping away and I stuck at it for another few years. And 2013, I fought at the World Championships, I won the individuals. And then when I got to the teams, um, I must have had about 10 fights. And I was, I remember a few muscles were torn, my ribs were burst. I was, um, I was actually peeing blood. So, you know, I had, I had a real good hiding, um, just getting through the, all those rounds because I did points and continuous. Yeah. Um, and I remember doing the final match and I, it's the first time I'd ever said to Master Walton that I just don't think I can get out and do this one. And, 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 and the thought of letting the team down, anyway, to cut a long story short, then on this one, it was a draw. So I got, I, the captains went out. So I, I, we chose the heads or tails. It was a coin toss. And if I'd, if I'd lost it, they would have stuck their fire trap, which have 
which would have been me. It would have all been on me. But yeah. I won the coin toss. So we sent our best fighter at the time, which was Warren Vice. And, oh. and yeah, we, we won it then. And um, in me, that, that was supposed to be my last tournament, but I just couldn't leave it like that. So I kind of, oh, that, was, <laughs> that was July time. And by, bearing in mind, I was in the lightweight. So every time, every April and October, you'd have an influx of black belts come through, young, hungry kids. It just, you'd have the, all those all the time. And then they'd go on the way to welterweight or middleweight because they were still growing. Um, so I'd always have those fresh faces all the time. And then, yeah, so in my head, I thought, I can't leave it like this. I need to leave it on on a on a win because I'd, I'd actually lost that team match um, in, in, the, in, in the final event. Um, so... Yeah, I, I kind of took a few months off, rebuilt again. Um, I had a chance to do a, a DVD with uh, Grandmaster CK Choi, which was his sparring DVD, which was quite a nice thing to do. Um, and then, yeah, 2014, I thought, right, this is the year. I, I went to the English Championships and I thought, if I don't win this time, that that's me that's me done. And much to my surprise, I just obliterated the the guy that I struggled with in the in the team match and, and won that English. And then I did the Welsh. And then the the last one was the European Championships where we went to Davos and was we did the points, we did the continuous. And I said, I just kept on track with my training. And then I, I did I did that. I won the points and the continuous. And I thought, yeah, that's the time to step away now. Yeah. So it's nice to stop on top. And then Grandmaster Morton offered me the coaching position, uh, which I do alongside him still. Uh, and that was 2014. And yeah, it's just nice, nice role to step into, if you like. So Brilliant. Well, well, that 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 was a, a, a fantastic uh, uh, overview. I mean, you said so many things. I've, I've been writing down a few things. I know. Uh, so I'm going to come back. To, I'm going to come back to them. But yeah. uh, uh, it, it, it's interesting what what you said at the very very beginning um, about being a bit of a clumsy kid. Um, do you know what I've, I've had? And I don't know whether this is your experience. I've had lots of children very similar, and mm. those kids, for whatever reason, just seem to stick at it. They stick at it. Uh, whether it's something to, to to do with that, their mentality. Um, yeah. I've got one particular lad who's now, well, he started with me when he was seven. He's now uh, 33 or 34. Mm. Uh, and there was no way, no way this kid was going to um, be, you know, when he looked at him, going to be good at Taekwondo. But he was absolutely awesome. You know, he went to, took him to Korea to, to fight in an international over there and did, yeah. did well, I don't know. Uh, you know, your your you teach is is that your experience or is it just uh, <laughs> maybe just one of things? I, I mean, I I think I think the children, you know, they've grown up in a, in a different world, and it's people say, "Oh, kids aren't the same nowadays." Well, kids have just they've just evolved, and they've they've got better. They're a bit more efficient than we are, but they did did they work as hard? Yeah, I think they work hard, but I think we just had a our version of working hard was go in there. Push your knuckles, sweats. If you haven't come away with your bruises or or your, your your legs aren't aching or you can't feel your legs, for example, that was our way. But that's not smart, is it? And but I think that kind of training mentally made me tough because I was never mentally tough. I, I have to give it all to take a note for that um, for the scenarios I've been put in. I mean, I, I think I've I always say I've been put in fortunate positions, and I, I've always been very modest about what I've won and what what I've actually managed to do. So when I when I was when I kind of outgrew my club Ashbourne for sparring, he, Tom recommended me to go to Ralph. Hmm. So then I was training with Ralph and then Ralph, he had 50, 60 people in his class. I mean, he's, you know, him. He's, he's an absolute legend in what he teaches. And at the time people used to travel from all over the UK to train on a Thursday night at his club. And then yeah. one day Ralph says, I'm not going to make it. I mean, Ralph was always late anyway. And he says, you got to take the class for me. And I was, I was flapping like mad, but he gave me no chance to plan. I just went with it. And I took the class and, and it, it worked out really well. And then people started to come over the country, all over the country to, to train with me or Ralph. It didn't matter who was there. You know, yeah. it's like when, when, when you're not there as an instructor, people want you there. Yeah. But Ralph had that in me where I just, just grew into that role where people enjoyed my sessions. And then I had the same thing one day with Grandmaster Walt. He says, right, I want you to take national squad training. I can't make it. And again, you, I'm filling big, big shoes here all the time. And I had no time to plan it. And I think that was the best learning curve for me. Yeah. And going back to what you're saying, I think, um, yeah, I, I was I was very clumsy, but I, at the time, I really know really thought that Taekwondo was the thing that I was going to do and wanted to do. And I didn't know um, at nine years old I was starting my full time career, if you like. And it's and and 
and then I never wanted, I was never interested in anything at school. I couldn't wait to leave school. I tried, I went to the fire service. I failed because I was colorblind. I passed out every single test, but I just wanted to do Taekwondo. I didn't know what I wanted to do with Taekwondo. I just wanted to do that. And that mentality yeah, stuck yeah. with me. It's, it's changed a little bit over the years, but the, the main drive and focus has still been there. And, yeah, yeah. and that's got rid of the clumsiness and the, the other bits and bobs because I had that mental toughness and drive. Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, 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 I think I was the other way around. I, I had my mental toughness. I didn't have the skills. I was always a, a, from a very competitive, uh, wanted to win everything, show everyone that I was just as good as anyone else. In the, it, but when I started Taekwondo, uh, like you, I was really into football. Nobody was going to tell me that I wasn't going to be a professional footballer. I love football, played for some really good teams. Um mm-hmm. And I had that mental t- toughness. When I started Taekwondo, I just didn't have the skills. So, but that mental toughness enabled me to to develop those skills and uh, yeah. sort of hang in there. But uh, co- coming back to, to to something else as well, actually, I remember, and I can't even remember what what year it was. Uh, you came down to Bristol, and I sparred with you for a little bit. And uh, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you know what was really interesting? I remember, you know, and, and you know what it's like because. Um, you know, I'd, I'd I'd see people. I think, oh, that person looks really good as a color belt. Mm. You know, I wonder if I wonder if they're going to be a light but lightweight when they come up to my my division, or you know, are they going to bypass it? And I remember sparring with you, thinking, wow, this guy's good. <laughs> I actually thought that twice. I thought, wow, this guy is really good. And, yeah, at the time, I was seeing Becky Riggs. If you remember Becky, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So we used to come down, yeah, yeah. And I I thought to myself. Wow, this guy was good, and I was really shocked by uh, your your confidence and your ability. Um, even then, I thought, "Wow, this this guy is going to be really good." <laughs> I was thinking, yeah. "He's not in my division." <laughs> I do. I remember there was for me there was two scenarios. I'm not sure if you actually sparred on the summer camp that I went to, but I remember spark, sparring Mark. Yeah, I remember it being in my head. I was like, "I just want to kick him in the head. I just want to kick him in the head. I just want to kick him in the head." That's all I kept saying to myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one was, yeah, it was at Bristol Academy. And I think even the days when um, Grandmaster Jude was sparring, we used to spar on a, on a Tuesday, or train on a Tuesday. Yeah. It might have been one of those. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good time. But I always remember it, and I remember it to, to this day, because I remember thinking, wow, you know, mm-hmm. this, uh, this 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 guy can um, can do really well. And I was thinking, it, it was quite interesting, because those usual things, oh, yeah, yeah, just a young lad. And all of a sudden, I thought, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to sharpen up here. Uh, look, 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 defend myself. But uh, no, well, well done to that. The the other thing is, and it is interesting because um, your story is very similar to mine going in into the competition. Because I remember um, I was sparring against uh, Grandmaster Sergio in the early days when and he was there, and, and I was coming up and um, uh, uh, Ray Smethers. Yeah, we uh, I remember getting a beating from both of those and thinking, right, going home thinking. Okay, I'm going to come back, <laughs> and, you know, yeah. and I did, and I got stronger, and I got better, and I got closer to them. And I yeah. think that's the thing. And you know, any students listening to this, I just want to say to them is, you, you've got to keep trying, you've got to keep doing it. You've got to fight people that are better than you, mm. uh, and you know, you will get better. And you've got to keep doing it. You've got yeah. to keep, um, and that will challenge you. That will make you better, and so on. So you know, I can, I can certainly, um, uh, you know. I- yeah, and I and I think I think that the the era that when I was a kid, I I I looked up to all of you guys, you know, the the guys that you've mentioned, and I I remember sitting there wanting to be there, but thinking I had no idea how to get there because, and I remember this one particular time it was at Bristol. It was at this is forgotten you here, and I remember it was Bristol Whitchurch. I think was the sports centre we used to have yeah. the English champs at or British, and I remember you doing Pat and Chung Moo. And I'm, I still to this day, I've never seen a better chung move than that. And it goes from the like the three <laughs> that you did. I, mean, I remember seeing you. I was like, how has he got so high? And he's he's got enough time. You, it felt like you had forever to just get your hands in that position. There was no rush. And you just landed in a perfect stance. I thought, wow, I, I definitely want a bit of that. And but I didn't have the belief then that I would get there. Mm. And and then, you know, fast forward a few years, then I was performing, you know, I'm not saying my children was better than yours or my partners were better than yours, but I'm just saying I was on yeah. the same, same stage a few years on, if you see what I mean. So, but all those, seeing you do that and seeing Tony Saul fight, Kenny Walton fight, Ralph Minot fight, you know, I go where, for, right, I'm going to try and do what they do. Yeah, yeah. I've got no idea how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to try and do it. You know, watch a few Rocky movies, get some Rocky music on there. We'll see what we can do. 
Well, no, I, 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 I take, I hear what you're saying because uh, I'm exactly the same. I'm sure many, many fighters listening to this will be the same because my, mm. my very first squad training, I was a black stripe and we, it was in Scotland in St. Andrews actually. Yeah. And, you know, Tony, w- 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 uh, sorry, Tony Sewell was there. Grandmaster Walton was there. And uh, I come in as this, this fresh faced kid. I'm thinking, right. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was looking at people thinking, wow, I want to be able to kick like that. I want to be able to hook, uh, you know, front leg hook kick Kim Stones and people like that. Oh, yeah. Wow. I, I just blew my mind. I remember driving back thinking, yeah, you know, I want to be part of that. And that's, yeah. I think it's great. And I think that's what, what happens is, you know, I'm sure you, you, you've inspired a lot of people within the TAGB, um, you know, to, to improve themselves and think, wow, you know, I want to be the next uh, Gordon Fern. And that's how it gets passed along. That's how it gets passed along. Um, you know, and um, I think, again, anyone, lis- anyone listening to this, is is watching people who can do it really well is so inspiring. Mm. I find that even today, I look at people and think, wow, <laughs> you know, I see someone at, I don't know, nine, 10 years old, I think, whoa, this kid's going to be good. Yeah. yeah. And they, they, don't, they don't even know it as well. So that, that's, that's the beauty of it as well. And it's just like, and you don't want to push it too much because you don't want to make them arrogant or egotistical. You just kind of, it's how do you nurture that? That's the key, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Def- definitely. And, not. And, and then battle the, the, the girls, girlfriend, boyfriends, drinking and all that type of stuff the party and yeah yeah no it's amazing and i think i think um you know certainly when i was in the the, the tagb and i've got lots of the friends still in the in the tagb the thing that was very very important as well as the competition was the camaraderie the friendship um mm. and just having a good laugh um you know i was telling some people at the weekend that uh uh, I can't even remember some of the some of the trophies that I got, but I can remember the good times we had in yeah. Holland or Los Angeles or wherever it was. It was just uh, such a blast. So um, definitely, yeah. I would definitely do it all again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I get it. I, I totally get it. And, and I say we, I, I came like my, I was the generation after you guys, so we were different. I mean, you guys were big characters, big personalities. And we all had like, I'm talking about my, my teammates like Andrew Deer, Warren Vice and, and Tyrrell at the time. We had, we had kind of big shoes to fill and we were never going to fill the shoes. I don't think personality wise, I think we were, I'm not saying you guys weren't focused, but we were like hot hitting hard on the train. And we want to be, you know, you want to dominate that division. It wasn't about just, just getting a medal. It was like, we want to win that division. We want to win it for, for years to come we want to dominate we want to be the name for that and it was just a we had a we just had a different mindset if i i personally think but well i, I think you did as well because for, from what i heard you know you you guys were very much like that was was we did it you know the, the important thing for me i remember going away on, on, a, on a trip with the team and i um, i wanted to more score more goals than anyone when we were playing football <laughs> that was my <laughs> that was my thing as well as do well in the tournament but the goals were very important <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, exactly yeah but um uh, on, on, a, on a serious note, then, um, you know, you mentioned about, uh, you know, you had a bit of a, an overview of, of um, you know, how, how you've come up. So how do you fit and how are you fitting your martial arts into your everyday life at the moment? What, what does a week look like for you? Oh, well, this is, this could take a long time as well. Well, <laughs> since, I, since I stopped competing, um, I I went for, a, I was like, okay, I don't have to diet anymore. I'm, I'm cool. I can eat what I want. I can drink what I want. And, and and you may have seen it yourself with old teammates. I I saw my old teammates, and I'm not going to mention any names here because this is not good. But they started to put weight on, and I was I was going to I was starting to be one of those. I had looked down for the first time ever. I had this little pot belly, and I had at the time I had a, lo- a little boy. Um, I mean he's he's 11 now, so not so little anymore. But um, I thought, no, nah, this is not me. It's not me. I need to do something else. So I I took myself back to the the David Lloyd gym. I was doing some. I had no direction. I did, what, what am I doing here? Because normally it's like a few rounds here, kicking, punching. So then I found CrossFit and I I went into a CrossFit gym and I got, I find it was like martial arts because there's there's so many different things. You've got the Olympic lifts, you've got the pull-ups, you've got the muscle ups you've got the handstand walks, handstand push-ups. And it, for me, you've always got something to learn like martial arts. Mm. So I started to do this, but then like anything, my my trait is I, I'm all in. I'm either all in or, or not at all. So you know, I was this 40 year old and, and all these 20 and 30 year olds are like, who's, who's this guy? He's just come out of nowhere. And he's just like falling on his head. He's falling off the bars. He's trying to lift silly amounts of weight. And then I went to do a, a coaching course on, um, on CrossFit. I got my level one 
coaching. So I wanted to understand it a bit more because again, as with our traits, it's you want to do that. So um yeah, and I was I was trying to get get to the point where um I was half decent and in CrossFit, if you're good at um something uh, or everything, then you are probably the best out there. But you want being average is it you can get a good score. So then the lockdown happened, which is great because I got a chance to train a lot more. Um it's like hidden training type thing. And then, and I started competing when I came out of lockdown and I, and I started to do really well. I started to podium again, which is, I got the thirst for the thirst for it. So that was quite nice. Um, and then, so I, CrossFit, I'm doing like five days a week, martial arts. I'm probably doing on my own, going through some patterns, a bit of kicking once or twice a week, not as much as I'd like. Yeah. Um, but I just, just to kind of tick over, because obviously I'm teaching, I want to still be a good standard for my students. So when I'm demonstrating stuff, yeah. um so yeah it's it's not that much it's uh um, and i always try and like you probably do yourself you try and kick and punch like you were 15 16 years old and then the next yeah. day it's like yeah. my legs legs don't really like this yeah so not- it, training's very very manic it's probably harder than it's ever been um and I, I'm, i've transformed completely what i do and i'm I'm probably the fittest i've ever been as well but doing because i'm competing at a high level in, in crossfit as well so Oh wow, fantastic! I'll have to, uh, I'll have to get some gen on that. On, on that, it, it is interesting because when I gave up uh, competing, uh, and I gave up, um, I, I wanted to carry on longer, but um, I had kids at quite a young age. Uh, my eldest now is thirty six. Yeah, uh, so I've got thirty six, thirty two, sixteen, and thirteen. Um, so. Wow. Yeah, there's that, quite, a, quite a quite a quite a range, but. Um, I, I I really ummed and ahed, um about giving up, but you know I was still travelling up to the Midlands to mm-hmm. start training. I thought, well, you know, I need to spend some more time with my son and, and so on. So I stopped. But when I stopped, I really mm. missed that bus. So I actually started doing some uh, gym work, and I started yeah. going to the gym three days a week doing de- doing some big lifts. Mm. Uh, bearing in mind, I was fighting. Um, uh, under 63 kilos or, although i did finish as a as a welterweight in the end yeah. but as a, at a higher weight I, I got up to 80 kilos doing deadlifts and um you know i was really doing the big lifts bench press and squats and um yeah. uh, just to try and replace the buzz of what i missed yeah uh, i couldn't replace it i couldn't mm-hmm. replace it didn't feel the same so in the end i stopped i lost the weight again because it was it was uh I wasn't moving as well as I, uh, my, my style of martial arts has always been about movement. So I had mm. to stop. Um, and um, I did get, I did get over it, but I, I did realize that I actually went into a bit of a depression um, yeah. when I stopped. stopped that happened a lot. Yeah. Trying to, trying to, trying to do that. And, um, you mm. know, c- certain things are, uh, are sort of around that time. I was thinking, you know, what, what's going on with me? I, I couldn't understand it. So um, I think it's important to anyone listening to, to that is to, is to realize once you've been at a, at a certain level and you've mm. had a certain success, living without that is really difficult. Yeah, definitely. hundred percent. Especially when you've done it for as long as you have, like the international thing, like, cause I was on the team for such a long time. It was, I saw people come and go over the years yeah, yeah. and and I was consistent throughout. I think even for some of the people that, that were longstanding, they, they, came after me and they left before me and they'd been on there for 10 years. And so actually one of them still on the team now. So, um, yeah. It, and, and you do see that people, if you haven't got anything to, to aspire to, then that they, they do, it does get depressing, you know, and like with any athlete, I guess. Yeah. It's, 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 it's tough. It's tough to, re- to, to replace it. And I know that sometimes I, I hear, um, you know, people mention it about, about footballers, you know, mm. they're training every day and all of a sudden they stop and they put on loads of weight and, you know they're, they're losing that um that 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 drive they can't get that buzz back that they had before and it's 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 really really difficult but uh no well well done to to you and the cross the crossfit it sounds great actually it sounds something that uh, uh that, that i um i would have uh, aspired to in the day to be honest I, whether i don't think i'll do it now i'm, I'm too busy trying to play like Jimi hendrix on my well, well, i actually actually managed to get ralph into it so i think he's doing it over in nottingham Oh wow! Yeah. He's, you get a book. Trust me, if you start, you'll get the book for it because you'll enjoy doing the gym. Because because people just think it's about Olympic lifting, but it's with the gymnastics and the metabolic conditioning, which is what you're prime for from from the martial arts background. But I remember because I used to fight uh, well the lightweight division, and I'm I'm seventy eight kilograms now, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got probably the less less amount of body fat that I had when I was fighting. So he's, the transformation has been massive. Um, and I do a, I do another thing called high rocks, which is a more of a running base, less skill base, which is something I'm a, an ambassador for. So I, I, we do those classes at my gym. And um, I, I competed with that last year. I went to the World Champs in Vegas. So l- last year was a big year. I did the European CrossFit Champs and the and the High Rocks World Champs. And I did about, probably got, got addicted to the competitions. I did about six, seven, maybe eight. But I underestimated how much recovery I'd need. So it broke me by the end of the year. But it was it was worth it. But it was just too much. Well, I, I still I still try and uh, do certain things. I've actually got a I, I tore my rotator cuff about three oh, months. Yeah. ago doing um walking handstands in my junior class yeah uh, so I, I still do a, a few uh, a few gymnastics movements but um yeah i need to i need to um be a bit uh be a bit careful but it's it, it to be honest it's i can't believe how well it's healed mm. i have been quite religious in the exercises and the rehab um, yeah, help. and it's it's quite good but it, it's a bizarre uh tear because i can i can deadlift a lot of weight but as soon as that arm goes above my head so you can move, yeah yeah anyway, there we go Mo- moving on moving on from that um uh and uh i i like to ask you know particularly um people that have competed at a, a certain level about um the if you want to call it the other side of of our of our martial art and our fitness and that's that's meditation and breath work now mm-hmm. i i got into i got into meditation uh, which is unbelievable for me because i'm quite a hyper person mm-hmm. uh, i never thought i'd be able to sit still for a very long um, but I do enjoy a little bit of meditation now, and um, uh, I do enjoy some some breath work. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm actually uh, taking a course in in clinical breathing at the moment. Oh, nice! Yeah, which is which is really really good. Um, and that side of 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 the if you want to call it the martial arts or uh, you know uh, sports therapy, mm-hmm. I find really really interesting. Whereas when I was 25, 26. I, I, no, no way would I ever be do, looking at something like that. I just wonder whether you've looked at anything like that. At all. Not, not as such. I um, so a lot of when, when I was younger, Ralph he had a, a North Midlands team, and we were very fortunate. He got us um, a sports psychologist, who's um, he was he's quite big as well, and he did a lot of different stuff with us. And I used to not necessarily do any like meditation type stuff, but I'd visualize a fight or a sequence when I was stretching or when I was running. So it would be kind of get the music in and just switch off in that way. Um, I think my relaxation was, that's probably part of my problem. Again, with you not being able to sit still, um, I I should do more of that. But I think we spend a lot of time running around for doing your daily chores and then for everybody else, family, work, whatever. Um, You just need to do more because that's a, a problem I have myself now is lack of sleep and not eating enough and that's that's the two main things that keep your keep your keep you going really you know the training is great but if you're doing too much and not enough of the other stuff it, 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 you but you start to break down it's as simple as that and you know and men- mentally you do get stressed and um and tired simple but yeah i i would, I would love to i've done a, the odd yoga class here there and everywhere but that should be for me i would like to do that on a weekly basis for sure yeah, yeah. Well, the sleep, the sleep's an interesting one. I'm, I'm I really prioritise my sleep now. Um, whereas years ago, <laughs> I definitely try and burn the candle at both ends. Uh, yeah. But now, I'm very, very seldom throughout the year will I be up past eleven, um, and I'm if not half ten, and I am up half six without an alarm every morning like clockwork. Um, and I use my breath work to to put me to sleep as well, which is quite nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just sort of have a, a breath routine that I yeah, go to bed with, um, and I, I, I have a, a, a sleep tracker and uh, an aura ring, um, mm. and um, to to see what my my deep sleep and my REM sleep was like. Uh, yeah. and I found that, um, it was it improved. Uh, I got that routine going. Went to bed at the same time. Got up at the same time. Did my breathing, and my deep sleep really improved. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but it's funny because I, I use a I use this device. It's called a Whoop, and that does the oh, same. Yeah. It, it monitors stuff like that, and it's amazing how. I mean, this basically tells you what, we, what you already know. Yeah. But then you've got, you've got your stats to look at if you if you like that type of thing. And yeah, it has highlighted not sleeping enough. And even though, like I I preach a lot of um, healthy food, I don't really take um, 
and like protein drinks or you know stuff like that because I, I always feel it's best to get it from your natural food um it just requires a bit more preparation and, and time and thought process so um with with that in mind i i do like to have a beer i, I still like to have a beer you know yeah. not not every single day but on a sunday i like to have a cold beer why not you know because you work hard in the week but that makes a massive difference on my sleep patterns because you know you, you and i've looked into it because since i stopped fighting i um i looked into nutrition I, I got nutrition qualifications and different things like that and it's, it's amazing what i did to myself as a, as a youth and then looking at what i do now i mean how i survived all those years I, I don't know especially with the weight loss but going back to the sleep thing you know I, I read into it like if you have alcohol you when you're when you're sleeping your body is obviously repairing so all those things that that should be repaired if you have, have alcohol your body take prioritize getting rid of the alcohol first so you'll spend the night your body's gonna spend the night doing that and you've yeah. not recovered so that's why people are wake up groggy and looking like they could do with more sleep and it's amazing how and that's changed how much i drink as well so and uh, not, I'm, I'm not, not an alcoholic, but I just say I like it. Yeah. yeah, no, I get, well, the, the food, the food thing is, again, is interesting because um, my diet has really uh, changed. I've gone to a, a very, a, an animal based yeah. diet. Um, I hardly eat any veg at all. Uh, mm, now. Yeah. Well, well, it's interesting because uh, my digestion is the best it's ever been. <laughs> It's the best it's ever been. And my energy levels are through the roof. Like, mm. so for breakfast, I had four eggs today um, mm. and, and bacon. Um, and I normally have some black pudding with that as well. And then th later on, I've got some beef shin. So I won't have hardly any carbs at all today. Mm. And it, it's it's amazing. Um, now, one thing I've realized is that one diet definitely doesn't fit all. Um, no, and I always, say, I always say to people is, what you have to try and do is is list try and listen to your body uh, and your body will tell you everything it needs to know and my, my body likes those things it, and it doesn't like it doesn't digest veg and cauliflower very well no uh, reason um but oh, well. <laughs> do you know so, yeah. again like you know for, for the people that are listening you you've obviously done your homework on that you you know you know because i i do find some people like vegetarians is a classic one people go right i'm going to be vegetarian but you don't really look into it and like with your proteins you'll have a protein which is an incomplete protein you need to match that up with it to make yeah. it a complete protein and 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 that's things and then things start happening like you know things start falling out or energy levels sink and and you know it changes so you if you are going to do stuff like that obviously you've got to do your homework and or maybe yeah. get some advice you know so for somebody that knows what they're doing yeah no i, I believe so i mean i i, I tell when, when i say maybe i mean I, I do eat a lot of um organs liver and kidney and uh, things yeah. like that. so yeah I, it's 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 quite amazing uh, i wish i'd have done this when i was competing actually <laughs> because yeah. i used to get a terrible afternoon lull mm. um, eating um and then i just have a load of uh carbs and i think i think my particularly um genetically because my, my mum was very much my build very very thin mm. uh, she was uh diabetic and in the end she lost um loose of her, she lost her legs and organs started failing uh, yeah. and she she didn't particularly eat a lot of carbs strangely enough no uh, but yeah yeah so i think whether it's a genetic thing um but yeah. I, I definitely feel stronger and um you know yeah energy in the way they are now but as you say i think if people are going to do it they have to research it yeah i mean it's funny when i, when I stopped stop fighting as well because my way was like i've got a week before tournament stop eating as much have one bit meal a day drink water and then after all that i i got into the whole nutrition thing so i did this fat loss thing not that i was overweight at the time i um and what i did is i ate six meals a day and over a three-week period and i lost a stone Oh, wow. six meals a day yeah just because i kick started the metabolism and i kept it going and when the three hours are up and i needed that food i ate it and he was just going it was like clockwork and i thought it was probably the best I ever felt but i lost a bit too much weight um but yeah and if you say to people oh you've you got to eat more to lose they'll be like no way that <laughs> makes sense it is difficult. I mean, I, I I eat twice a day. I don't eat three times a day. And you normally after four o'clock, five o'clock, I don't eat at all. Just have uh, green tea or wa water. Like you, I have the occasional bit of alcohol, not a lot. Um, mm. But um, you know, socially uh, and at celebration time. But um, yeah. yeah, I find it it works really really well for me. And it, 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like with me, I I have to eat so regularly. I'm always hungry. And the, but and then my my best mate Joe Skembry, he he got into after competing, he got into triathlons and Ironman competition, which is you know there's there's a lot of fuel being burnt there. And yeah. he, I think I'm pretty sure he eats once a day. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, there's two things there. That that's amazing, isn't it? And the second thing is when you see him, tell him I need to speak to him on this podcast. Yeah, okay. but he'd love to. I'm actually going away skiing with him and Ron Sergo and Johnny Peros in a week. Oh wow! Time. Yeah, I'd love to speak. To him. I'd love to speak to them all, to be honest. But, but yeah. yeah, please let let them know. Well, listen, we're we're coming we're coming towards the um coming towards the the end. But um, I'm I'm hoping. See what what I'm trying to do uh this year 2023 is I'm, I'm speaking to people but i also i'd love to speak to you again and one of the things i'm starting a series on the mind of a fighter mm. uh, and you know developing yourself as a fighter and, and how you have to think um you know as a fighter you know not, not just training but when you're competing uh, and after that and um you know you, you the thoughts that go through your head so um uh I, i'm hoping that you, you you'll uh you'll come on again and talk 100%. about it definitely that, that'll be really really nice uh and you know hopefully i'm gonna uh, talk to some of the people i've talked to before uh those have been successful in competition you know you, you you're certainly up there and one of those people that have, uh, has done really really well over a over a very long period of time as well um mm. so thank you for that and and the next thing is that if you have anything at all uh, anything that you want to put on the show notes or um uh anything you want people to know about you then please send them in and i'll uh, i'll get them on the uh um on the show notes so don't go away after this by the way because yeah. I'll talk about that. but uh, i just want to say uh from me and from the people listening thank you very very much for just taking the time to to share some of your thoughts uh some of your martial arts journey um with us and mm. um as i said going going all the way back to when i first had that little spar with you uh i knew you were the real deal so well done <laughs> well, thank you thanks for having me as well it's been my pleasure no no worries and we'll, we'll chat again soon uh so thanks very much to the um uh, living martial arts podcast fans i'm just signing off it's me the dark master i'll see you again very very soon with another great guest on my podcast thank you